This is the femur. This, of course, is the bone that runs through your thigh. Let's, let's spend a few minutes and look at some of the anatomical landmarks that make up this bone. Not surprisingly, yeah, certainly the whole thing's called a femur, but most of the bumps that you see in here also have a name. And in the world of medicine, names are very important. So let's walk through and have a look. Now, first of all, let's get a sort of proper orientation. This is the superior, this is the upper end, that is the lower end. You also notice that when you look at the femur, back out here, it's not straight, there's a bow to it. It, it bows in one direction. That is the front or the anterior surface, and the, the other part would be the posterior surface. So now we know top, bottom, front, back. So always start with your general orientation. Now let's start at the top and work our way down and start to look at some of the features. So of course one of the most prominent features is this. This is the head of the femur. And not surprising it looks like this because most of us have seen a basic skeleton and we know that sits into part of the hip. So it's the ball and the socket joint. Then it fits into an area called the acetabulum. And we'll look at that when we start to look at the hip anatomy. So we have the head of the femur. And then this little bit right here is the neck, sometimes called the surgical neck of the femur. Now as we look around, we'll see that there are some big bumps. There's a big bump here. Now remember, top, front, this would be the lateral surface this big lateral bump and you can actually feel it if you sort of you know poke around near your hip and come up the the, the outside of your, your thigh you eventually kind of feel this big bony area and then it kind of gets squishy again that's what you're looking at here and this is the greater trochanter okay. now if I'm gonna have some called the greater trochanter in the world of anatomy, you can almost bet I'm gonna have something with a very similar name. And in this case, I do have something like that. So that's a greater trochanter. Here is the lesser trochanter. Of course, it's much smaller. And if you look, there's a line that runs between them, this ridge. This is the intertrochantal line. Now, of course, we have the shaft that runs down here. And when we get down to the bottom, you can see that, let's have a good view here. You can have a really look at the bottom there. You can see it's curved. They're like rockers. And not surprisingly, they're like rockers because, of course, that sits upon the bone below it, which is the tibia. And those act as rockers. Now, we're going to give them a special name. These we're going to call condyles. Right? These rockers are the condyles. Now, not surprisingly, there's an area just above or near there, which we call the epicondyles. Epi, of course, above, close to, right? In the same area. So now that we've looked at some of the major bits up here and major bits down here, let's look. This is the shaft of the bone. And I'm just going to pull back so we can get the orientation. Now remember, quick self-check. What surface is this anterior or posterior? Because remember, it's bowed here. Let me flip it this way. And of course, this is the anterior surface because it bows up. Underneath here is the posterior surface. Now let's flip it over and look at the posterior surface. If you see, there's a line, there's a groove, not a groove, a line, a ridge that runs along here. And this is the linea aspera, the linea aspera. And this is a place where muscles attach. Now, just a few comments about all these bumps and all these lines. Why are they there? They're there because this is where either the bone articulates with another bone. Articulation means moves connected to, or it's a place of attachment of muscles or ligaments and tendons. So every little bump here has a purpose. Now, while we're looking at this, if we look in closely, let's try and get a good view. You see there's little holes there. And there's holes spread throughout parts of bone, and those are nutrient foramina. And nutrient foramina are where things like blood vessels, arteries, nerves, veins, um, and lymphatics enter because bone, despite what it looks like here, is actually living tissue within it, within you. So it really does these, need these nutrients. So there's a quick introduction to the femur. What are the directions? What's up? What's down? What's left? What's right? And also um, some of the major bits and pieces.